Today we're going to take a look at the Xiaomi Mi Pro 2 electric scooter and find out if it's any better than the M365 and all the horrible flaws that had. Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. About two years ago, I first took a look at the Xiaomi M365, and if you're interested in taking a look at that review, I'll leave it in the link below. But that undeniably was one of the most popular scooters, and has been ever since. You see it everywhere you go. And since then, Xiaomi have brought out quite a number of different scooters. Possibly too many in my opinion, or at least too many to review every single one of them. But I feel now is the right time to jump back onto a Xiaomi scooter and take a look at the Mi Pro 2. So let's dive straight in with a ride test. So a huge thanks to uh, E-Series for sending out the Xiaomi Mi Pro 2. This thing I've been quite excited to test out for quite some time because it is the successor really to something like the 9Bot Max and the Xiaomi M365, both of which I've reviewed quite highly. I mean, the M365 was full of fatal flaws. Full of them. Absolutely full of them. But the 9Bot Max was a significant improvement to that. So where does the Xiaomi Mi Pro 2 sit within this line? Well, this is almost a combination of the both. It takes the best bits, literally the best bits of both. And I think it's such a good improvement. First of all, they have got rid of the horrible folding mechanism that the Xiaomi M365 had. And they've now put in the new folding mechanism, which was on the uh, 9 bot Max. This folding mechanism is safer, more secure, and has a lot less problems because the M365 had so many issues with the folding mechanism. It was untrue. The amount of people that would have the scooter just collapse on them midway through is unbelievable. And they really would hurt themselves as well. So the fact that it now included the newer folding mechanism type is really, really good. Now, ride quality is very nice as well. 8.5 inch wheels, pneumatic tires as well. So uh, it's very cushioned, despite the fact it's got no suspension. I'm actually quite surprised with how smooth this ride is. Really, really nice. Acceleration is good as well with a 300 watt motor. I mean, I'm going pretty slow now and just a quick push on there. Takes a couple of seconds to bump in and we get started. We're at top speed, which comes out at 15 mile per hour around that mark anyway, which is respectable it's nothing superb i mean by now i would have expected jami to have increased the speed of their scooters slightly but i guess they're trying to hit a consumer market here that doesn't need anything faster than 15 mile per hour partly out of need but also partly out of laws because in a lot of countries 15 miles per hour is pretty much the fastest you're legally allowed to go on the scooters and I guess they don't want to break any rules or be restricted to selling it in those countries so that's probably why max range you're looking at about 25 miles that's not too bad again that's really respectable but again that is massively massively dependent on your weight on your height on the weather on the type of ground that you're on at the time in this instance the max rider weight as well is only 100 kilograms so i am literally on the maximum possible weight you can get for this it still performs rather well but because it's only got a 300 watt motor it can sometimes struggle a little bit to get up to top speed and also going into the wind and uphill can be a little bit of a struggle as well. But overall, the feel is extremely familiar to the Xiaomi M365. It feels more like the M365 in terms of the way it rides than the 9Bot Max. 9Bot Max was a bit heavier, I think at 15 or 16 kilograms. I can't remember off the top of my head. That was a bit heavier. This just feels a little bit lighter. There's one thing I really like, though, is the fact that it hasn't got a stupid bell that the, the uh, 9 bot Max had. That bell was integrated into the handlebar, and it meant that every time you went to accelerate, you'd turn the bell at the same time. Bloody stupid. This has no integrated bell, although in this instance, I do have a nice little bell. That bell, although it's not integrated, you don't want to remove it because 
that is how you clip it down. So when you folded it, that's its clip. Turning is fine, turning is okay. It's relatively high off the ground. So you've got a bit of a clearance there when going around and stuff. But overall, do you know what? I really, really like the way this feels. It is a very derivative product. The thing is, if it's so similar to the Xiaomi M365 and 9Bot Max, where does it fit in the whole kind of ecosystem? Well, that's an interesting one. Because I think looking at the M365, it's a massive improvement on that. The parts seem more reliable. They've taken everything they've learned from the previous scooters and made it better. So that's a positive, that's really good. So I guess it's much better than the M365, but as for the 9Bot Max, they are quite similar. This is a little bit cheaper, however, than the 9Bot Max, off the top of my head. And I think it's more designed to be a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to manage than the 9Bot Max. But overall, I can't fault the ride. It's classic, it's familiar, it's similar. Another big difference between the M365 and this is the addition of the actual uh, speed on the controller itself. I can see what speed I'm going at the moment. I'm hitting 23 kilometers per hour. Yeah, 23 kilometers an hour. I'm coming around the corner now and we'll see how fast I can get it up to on the straight. We're on the top straight now. Let's see how fast we can get this up to. It's a slight uphill though on the top straight. We're at 22 kilometers an hour. So it has no problem reaching that top speed. Nice addition as well that it's got a physical back brake. Unlike the 9Bot Max as well, this is front wheel drive. The front wheel drive is miles better than the rear wheel drive on the 9Bot Max in my opinion. And that's because you've got less likely to have accidents. I mean, anyone who's driven a rear drive car will know that they are not as stable to drive as a front wheel drive car. So in my opinion, Rear wheel drive is dangerous, very dangerous. So the fact that this has a front wheel drive really, in my eyes, makes this potentially better than the 9Bot Max. It makes it much better because it feels safer, yet it's got all of the improvements that the 9Bot Max had over the M365. And even then, this is still cheaper. So ultimately, I'm genuinely thinking this is possibly one of the best commuters vehicles I've tried so far. Now, obviously at the moment in the UK, it is currently illegal to ride these things on pavement and roads in public. You can only ride it on private land, which is why I'm here at the track to test it out. So if you do buy one of these, obviously please uh, only use it on private land or don't be a pirate like me. Just ride responsibly, wear helmets, don't be a numpty dumpty. So that is the Xiaomi Mi Pro 2. I think it's probably time we take a closer look. This was exactly the kind of experience I expected to have on the Mi Pro 2. Nothing extra special and nothing that's vastly different from what's come before. In fact, it's so similar that I believe the untrained eye might not even be able to tell them apart. It's still a great looking scooter though. The previous version, the M365, has almost set the stage for how we expect scooters to look, and I think the Mi Pro 2 fits those shoes perfectly. But the real question is, do I think it's an absolute must-have, or are these iterative changes not worth the upgrade? Overall, they've made some incredible positive changes that has absolutely benefited the design of the Mi Pro 2. And the thing is, I think this could be one of the best budget-friendly options available at this moment. Right now, over on E-Series, the price is just £439, which makes it an incredible bargain for the amount of specs that you get in that scooter. If anything, it might even be a bit cheaper than the original M365 was when it came out. Now, if you want to take a look at it yourselves, I will leave a link in the description below so that you can go and take a look. There is one massive but, and one irritating design flaw that they haven't changed from the M365. A few of you that remember that review, you know I criticised loads of different things about it. There was one particular thing that I really, really disliked, and that was the experience that you had if you ever needed to repair a puncture. The rims were super deep 
and the tyres were super tight to those rims, which made it extremely difficult to repair a puncher. This hasn't been changed. Why has it not been changed? And this isn't just me that finds it. So before any of you are about to comment and say, oh, you're not a man for not being able to change a tire, shut the hell up because that stinks like you haven't tried to change a tire on an M365. Anyone who's tried it will know it is one of the most frustrating things ever. I would rather cheese grate my own elbow than have to do that again. Seriously, it should be used as some form of punishment in a gulag. It is awful. And unfortunately, they've not changed it as far as I can tell. Now, this could have been solved by a simple addition of a split rim, especially on the rear, which obviously isn't motorized. They could have just allowed a split rim, which meant you could take it apart and reassemble it really easily, but they haven't done. Why? Good God. So this really is one of the only downsides of the Mi Pro 2. And I'm hoping that eventually they choose to up it. Now it is possible to change it. And what a lot of people do is change it out for solid tires so that in the future, you're never gonna get a puncture and hopefully you won't have to change those tires as regularly. Obviously that comes with its own problems, but apparently with the Mi Pro 2, a lot of those issues such as circuitry being shaken loose those have been mitigated from the m365 so this particular model is a lot better if you do decide to put solid tires on but again it's just a thing that you might need to think of because it hasn't got any suspension you might find the riders a bit harder if you do that but seriously that is the only real thing that i found negative about this experience so far but put that to one side, it is one of the most phenomenally well-priced electric scooters that you can buy right now, and I genuinely think it's an utter bargain at that price. But it got me thinking, because these are just iterative changes on the M365 and on the 9 bot Max, is there a way that we can measure these changes and how well it performs? It's all very well doing a ride test, but actually, does a bigger battery harm the performance, such as the acceleration or top speed? Does it handle differently? Is it capable of going around corners quicker? These are all things that kind of add up to a different experience in a scooter, even though they have just iterative changes. So naturally, the way that we can do this is with a lap time, and it's no coincidence I was at a track earlier. So what I'm gonna do from now on is I'm gonna put every single scooter that I have around the same track and create a lap time board, which definitely hasn't been seen in a popular BBC motoring show, which you guys may or may not compare me to on a regular basis. But you know what? Sod it. I thought I'd go the whole hog. Now I realize that some scooters that I'm gonna put around this track will vastly outperform others. But I think some will surprise us because some are lighter and better accelerating. Some have a better top speed, but are terrible accelerating because they're really heavy. These are all things that may end up surprising us in the long run. And it'll just be useful anyway to look at lap times versus previous iterative versions. So in this case, we could look at the M365 and the 9 Bot Max, compare it to the Mi Pro 2. But hold on, before we do a lap, let's play a little game. This is the lap and I want you to comment below, pause now, and comment below how fast you think the Mi Pro 2 can get round that lap. And then once you've done that, let's find out. Good afternoon and welcome to Herefordshire Raceway where we are gonna be testing the speed of the scooters today. So Stu is now on the starting line and we are gonna set him off. On your marks, get set, go! So as he's going off here, he's uh, approaching Woodlands Corner. This one is really easy to keep to the corners because it's not got a super acceleration. The top speed is only about 15 mile per hour. Once he's around Clark's Corner, he then has McRae's. Seems to be having a bit of an issue there. Looking a bit slow. But he takes that corner quite nicely and accelerates out into McRae's. After McRae's, we've got the pit straight and then into the bridge corner. Going up the tunnel now. Mind and not take the head off. He's cleared the bridge, no problems there. 
and after the bridge he goes into Druid's Corner. Nicely over the bridge, down onto the pitch straight. And it's looking a bit slow if I'm honest. He's, he's got it's got crouch on, he's going to get his top speed. And across the line. And he's over the line in 1 minute 14.12 seconds. 1 minute 14.12 seconds. That is... I don't know. It could be quick, it could be slow. Now I've actually put two other scooters around the track and you'll see those episodes very, very soon. So I don't want to spoil it for you whether or not that was faster or slower. But what I will say is that the Mi Pro 2 in my eyes is the bread and butter of electric scooters. It's the staple diet. Every single person that you see has a Xiaomi M365 or possibly the Mi Pro 2. And there is a reason for it because this thing is such a solid bread and butter pudding device is just really good across the board and great value for money and i think it's a perfect place to start to measure other scooters against on that lap time board obviously there isn't a physical board at the moment but i will have something for you in the future so stay tuned on that one but that concludes my thoughts on the me pro 2 Guys, if you found today's review entertaining at all, I'd really appreciate you return the favor and hit that thumbs up. I'm trying to get over 500 likes on every single video at the moment, so every single thumbs up helps. So please, please, please hit that thumbs up. And if you do want to see more scooters go around the track, make sure you hit that subscribe and that notification bell to see when they land. Obviously, that lap time board is going to be building up very, very quickly. We've got about four or five more on the way. We've already put two more through as well. So if you do want to see those, make sure that notification bell is rung. But other than that, guys, thank you very much for joining today. And I really hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.